Hello my friends and welcome, let's start from the front lines review, for this we're gonna use the new military map presented by the International Institute of the War Researches. Let's go to Kherson area, here they mentioned that Ukraine took some sort of the ground in this area near to Antonovsky bridge, so all of this blue territory is under control by Ukrainian forces, as you can see we are very close to the Dnepr river and quite far away from Oleshki city, or it's better to say the small town. Ukrainian troops are building the supply center in this area and also Ukrainian command sends reinforcements to this territory regularly. However, it's still not enough to break the Russian defense and go to the nearby town. The yellow territory over here is also under the Russian control. Unfortunately, for now it is like that. On this military map you may see the detailed information about the Russian defense lines and here the Kimbersky Peninsula is already peninsula again before because of the flooding in this area it turned to the island and now there is the ground connection with the mainland it means that Russia may continue supply of their group in the Kimbersky Peninsula. Let's go to the south front line here in Lobkova no any movement for maybe one week already so everything is stationary there Ukraine tries to move in from Orihiv but still without the main gain of the territory there was the movement last week I think we took around one kilometer of the land something like that here near to Hulai Pole the fighting is continue also without any sort of the movement here after Ukraine reached control over Rivnopil, we also tried to offense from this place, there are no any villages, just some fields, and I guess we're gonna move from Urajayana, going from this direction to Staromayorske, simultaneously going from this direction as well. And there is the elevation in this area that is hard to reach, you can see the average elevation is around 200 meters, but still it is the obstacle and it's hard to reach the high land. Let's go to the Bakhmut area here, as you can see Ukrainian army continued to push. Recently we reached Kurdimivka, we took part of the village under control. For now it's the small part, just one of the streets, but the main thing that Ukrainian army crossed the channel, the water obstacle, and that will make the movement of Ukrainian army more fast, I just hope. Obviously in this village we're gonna slow down a little, but after we'll take Kurdimovka, we're gonna go to Andreevka, I hope. Also Ukrainian forces are moving closer to Klishivka. According to the information which is coming from the Ukrainian command center, our guys intensified the assault actions in the Bakhmut area. But still looking at this military map, even if we'll take the Bakhmut under control, there are heavy defense lines of the Russian Federation behind the Bakhmut, so I don't see the close future perspectives for Ukrainian army to penetrate those lines. We need to concentrate our forces on some sort of the direction. If it is the south part of Ukraine, we need to go all in over there with the current resources available. For now, Ukraine tries to search for the weak spot of the Russian army and then move most of the resources into particular position. According to Blinken, the Ukrainian counteroffensive is now at the early stage. He says that the major events will take place over the coming weeks and months. The Ukrainian armed forces have everything for success, Blinken says. I will correct him, probably we have everything for success, we are still in lack of the western made fighter jets and we are still in lack of the long range ground based missiles like Atakams. But it seems like there is the good news about Atakams after most of the senators pushed the White House to agree the deal to supply those rockets to Ukraine. Now according to many of the resources, for example here the Wall Street Journal says that the deal is very close to be conducted. United States close to approving long-range missiles for Ukraine attackers. Actually, the United States of America already have the project of the budget for the next year and their attackers is included as the supply for Ukraine. So I think that the main decision has already been taken by the White House and those missiles will be supported 
to Ukraine, hopefully this year. This is the possible range of the Atakams missiles. There are two types, Block 1 and Block 1A. 103, 186 miles accordingly. With the long range variant, Ukraine is able to reach the Kerch Bridge. But even with the shorter range, rockets were able to reach most of the Russian hubs and supply centers that are now unreachable with the standard HIMARS rockets. I think that attempted military coup in Russia also played a great role for those supplies for Ukraine. Because our allies see that Putin's administration is getting weaker, Russia itself is getting weaker as well. There is no way for Russia to equally respond to the supplies of the Atakams rockets and to counter-react to this measure presented by allies. About the Wagner army, there are many of the centers that are still open in the Russian Federation and it seems like no one is going to close them in the nearby future. Those are the recruitment centers where Wagner gets all of its well volunteers. About the new Wagner bases in Belarus, today it's been confirmed that there will be three of the bases on Belarus territory. Two of them at the western side of the Belarus bordering the NATO member countries and one, as I said to you yesterday, not far away from the Russian border. The self-proclaimed president of Belarus said that Wagner's will train the regular armed forces of Belarus for further military possible action. Indeed, the fighting on the front lines has intensified and I cannot post many of the videos on this resource. To be updated with more information, please check out my Telegram channel. You may find the link for it in the video description just below. We have almost reached 200,000 subscribers over there and I update the information there more regularly. There you may also post comments, pictures and interact with other users. For example, this picture was posted. It's the Denmark Armed Forces with a German MG42, I guess, machine gun. Looks funny, but apparently could be effective against the low-flying drones. The Russian army started to get their very old artillery shells from their storages. Those are from 1939, made before the Second World War. As you can see, they're rusty and I wonder if you can shoot them from the artillery systems. Russian soldiers start to complain about the quality of those shells and they took the pictures and sent them on the social media to draw the attention to the topic. The Russian prisoners who are now fighting for the Russian army in one of the battalions, it's called Storm Z. They are located on the southern part of the front lines refuse to continue the fight because they don't have enough ammunition, they don't have enough supplies, even not enough food. This particular battalion of the Russian prisoners supported the Prigozhin flash mob the last weekend. After Prigozhin failed their expectations, they were very angry and sad about it. Putin visited some of the science exhibition in Russia and he drew something on the board over here and I'm not the expert. I published this video on my Telegram channel asking the public to tell what he drew. Actually, most of my viewers and followers said that it is the SpongeBob over there. I'm not sure because SpongeBob doesn't have the ears. So it's very strange uh, drawing from Putin. He even signed it and everyone around was astonished about his drawing and he is very proud of it. There were even some variants that he drew the Vatnik. It is the Mimi image that we have since 2014 to show the average drunk Russian who supports Putin's actions. So this is the original image. It is very strange. Meanwhile, Prigozhin was spotted in Russia, St. Petersburg. He went to Belarus yesterday and today he went to Moscow and then flew to St. Petersburg. He tried to hide his face, but he was uncovered. As it was reported by Ukrainian intelligence, there's the fight between the military Russian intelligence and the Russian FSB. They have very strong tensions between each other and now the situation starts to escalate. Actually, the Wagner project was created by the Russian military intelligence. About the General Surovikin, his position is yet unknown. Some of the Russian resources stated that he wasn't really arrested, but the Western resources published the information that he is now in the Fortova arrested by the Russian FSB. The Russian officials said that Wagner will not take part in the war 
any longer. The same information we have from the Ukrainian chief of intelligence Budanov. He said that Wagner will not go to Ukraine. They have different tasks nowadays. Video of Putin probably from yesterday's meeting with the people in Dagestan. Very strange. <laughs> <laughs> Russia started to use the special nets over their vehicles to avoid grenade damage that could be dropped from the drones. As you can see, the construction is very big and it's the huge demasking factor of their vehicles that could be destroyed by artillery in that case or anti-tank missiles. As you see, it's just enormously huge. My friends, now press the like to this video and also if you want to support my job, there are some links available in the video description just below. You may support me on Patreon, PayPal or just on a sponsorship of this YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your awesome support. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.